What's popular YouTube? Another day, another demo. And it's been about five days, but we're back. We're back at it like asthmatics. We're in there like swimwear. Uh, we, we exist like Magisk. I don't know. I can't think of any more. Here we are to watch Ancient for the first time on this channel in its history. Abbreviated as ANC on HLTV. And what you all are wondering from this very curious thumbnail, who is this player that got so many kills versus what device called the most stacked team in Europe, a.k.a. the most stacked team in the world, talent-wise? G2. How did one man get so many kills? How did they kill Nico so many times? How did they kill Hunter so many times? How did they kill Omnic so many times? How did they kill Jack so many times? How did they kill Nexus so many times? How did he do it? And who is he? He must be extremely well-known. He must be uh he must be on some top five team. No, it's not the case. Now if you I'm sure you tried to guess already by looking at the thumbnail. You know, maybe you're here to get some maybe a little bit more context. A tip for to guess. It's a top twenty team that he's on. He's a player that people don't even talk about on this top twenty team very often. He's somebody who I feel like has gotten better a lot in this last year. And if you were watching Flashpoint, I was talking a lot about him. His name is Madden. And his stat, his stats for the last uh, last month have been uh, pretty, pretty great overall. I think this is his all-time. His last month has been pretty fantastic. His last three have been pretty fantastic. Uh, and he's, uh, he's a guy who apparently is the... He's the ancient one. He was the man built specifically for this Aztec for for Aztec Temple Explorer. He's the Indiana Jones of CS:GO. It's Madden. Look at this: thirty-eight kills versus complexity on Inferno. And in this game looks pure white ratings here: forty-two and nineteen uh, over G two on Ancient. And we want to know what the hell happened. So this is a game we have to watch in POV. We have to see it from his perspective. We have to learn all the best angles. Nobody went positive in KD on this map except for Madden. Plus 23, 2.15 rating. And I remember watching the tail end of this game live and seeing that Madden had like 38 kills and then G2 started to get a few rounds here. And I was like, oh, he's done. He's, he's out of gas. There's nothing left. And then he just went over. He went o he went ab over and above. He didn't go into autopilot. He closed it out strong on these three rounds. So let's go and see what the f what the freak happened. S excuse my language. He plays on the God Res 1280 by 960. Um, here's his bob and shit. Check his params. They've improved this website. Shout out Apex for doing this. Still not being sponsored. So you know. <clears throat> Mohan at boxer.gg. You know what I'm saying? You want to make a, a sponsorship or something? We could talk. Madden's from Montenegro. And FPX are, and this is like a truly international team. This is a flag. I was like, what flag was this? I had no idea. FPX have been a team who have climbed slowly into. Within the top 20, which is impressive because FaZe are ranked number 39 in the world. So think about that. Two times better than FaZe. That's pretty sick. It's hard these days to get a, a team to a high rank. 18 is, is not easy. And I'll, t I'll tell you this. Teams that play against Fun Plus Phoenix are scared of them. And they should be. They win a, a lot of their really hard games. They don't win all of their games, but they win a lot of their really hard games. So... We'll see if they can break out. It's a lot of talent here waiting to get into that tier one level. Our boy Stiko, of course. And picking up Ancient and just picking up two, I think, two straight wins on the map is a great start. So let's see how they did it. Let's see what we can learn from Madden. And let's get into the demo. Find out what we can find out. They start CT side. And yeah, what we really want to know is what are all the best angles on this map? What does this look like from his perspective? We're going to be watching. We've got his radar, of course. Nobody else popping up on the radar except for what we see from him. 
The only thing we're missing is uh, some of the team communication, but the radar has all of the info that everybody has, except for some of the sound that might be heard in some of the quieter moments across the map. And calls could be made. So we've got the triple push out cave. And here I can practice some of the casting too. I need to get used to uh, talking about this map in all the different positions. Or I'm going to start calling everything Cubby, Diggity, and Bruce. Especially when I'm casting. Madden works hard for the first one. All the G2 kill players get kill crossing site. And when we watch this map evolve, of course, things are going to change a lot. But one of the big reasons you don't want to go long A to A on this map is because the donut is so strong for uh, holding. You can want, you can see basically the entire plant zone. There's just no safety. So it's, it's really tough if you come through uh, only long A uh, with low utility or something and, and are prepared for the donut rotation, especially if the CTs have mid control. Very, that's one of the very few things we know about this map so far. That uh, donut is really, really strong. It's also a spot that you can hear the rush on the A side of the map through, and uh, you can uh, you can use it, of course, not only to hold A but hold mid. So a, an important position. And then not only that, it, there's no angles that you can get stuck in. They're not like the best fights ever, but you can play on the right or the left side, and you have the ability to leave, and you can't molly out the entire thing at once in the back. So you can be quite annoying towards someone in Donut, but Donut uh, is, is a real big key for the CT side in terms of the amount of utility, the information, and the versatility when it comes to defending A, retaking A, or even watching mid. Uh, Madden plays B side on this round. They throw the late flash actually with Emmy, which, uh, you know, I want to give credit to Madden for... Uh, clearly learning how to play this map so well he could just farm but also uh to emmy who presumably came up with a lot of cool stuff for them I'm sure devil walk came up with a lot of cool stuff you know this is a team that that usually doesn't lose because of of their teamwork they usually lose because they're like you know maybe outclassed a bit individually but uh, again they're on the precipice they're super strong they're always thinking I'm not surprised they're able to learn ancient uh at one of the fastest as a units you know what I mean so Okay. Some of those default B grenades are still very, very strong. I think that this demo was played after they pulled back the spawns. They might have pulled back the spawns after the first games. I can't remember exactly. But yeah, just it's still being able to throw grenades is still so easy. Uh, deep into the spawn. So this HE is interesting for me because uh, people crossing from, yeah. People crossing to mid is a big problem. And uh, this smoke, molly, nade interaction to cut it off, I think is is important not only for the CTs to try to defend against, but for the Ts to try to fight through and cross like Nico just tried to do. Because if you can connect B to mid and there's no short B into that tunnel from the CT side, then a lot of the spots on mid are not so good. So now we get into a long flank. We've got great spots, actually, with Donut Control. Emmy dies in spawn, which is something. And Hunter takes two players out. So Donut's obviously a great spot, but not as useful when you're 1v3. Let's we'll just see if Zen can do anything with this. Honestly, that's, that's good money to grab. And maybe he survives the round as well. No change into the no change into uh, the Galil on this round. Three rounds deep. Silence them four. I'm picking up the Silence them four almost purely because of the money. Being able to buy more often, being able to get that extra nade. This late flash from Emmy is doing so well to catch them off. The Mollies come down, and G2 are trying to disrespect the uh, the setup by trying to rush into B because. I guess they really believe in their entries and if they have their spawns, they're taking them. But the set late flash that Emmy's throwing has got, I think it's got two kills in two different rounds for, Ma for Modin. And we were talking about Modin, 42 kills on this map, but what's, Mo what's Modin without Emmy? You tell me. That was some pretty good stuff. All right, I skip, of course, right through his death as soon as there's a, a, a lull in the rounds. 
And to to repent, I'll we'll watch the whole retake. Oh my god, it was close. Nice try next uh next uh we nearly recovered that actually 3v5, which is pretty impressive. Lots of damage death and Emmy's back on an MP9. So I guess this is the flash that Emmy was throwing uh for for him. And I don't know if they eat it again, but they come out for the exact same fight. G2 are just asking him to die here over at long B. They really want to do this. And we have G2 perpetually uh, perpetually consistently smoking uh uh, mid B off to threaten that they might come towards mid. Oh, fantastic 4K here from Madden. Easy cleanup. All headshots, just ecos. Any scoreline like this going to have a certain amount of ecos. That's just the way it goes. But he's looking good. But yeah, using the smoke on T side to consistently cut this off is so important. I think you were no matter where the meta goes, this is going to be completely standard. Just look at the minimap and what you create if you open up the ability to go from B to mid. What's interesting for me is that Madden's not actually uh, fighting that hard when the smoke's down or tossing his Molotov down in any specific way. He's just waiting behind it. And I guess it's because they're not in any jeopardy at the bottom of mid. No one on the CT side is pushing to the bottom of it. So that's what I'm kind of looking for right now. So Amada here is saving a ton of utility. He doesn't make any presence, so he's chill. I think Emmy takes a peek off this. They get some info. I think one day there'll be a better a better way to do this. And then usually this is the part of the round, in my opinion, where some of the... There's a lot that we don't know. They're learning as they go, but this is the part of the round where the mid-round where it's the least understood for, for the pro teams who are playing it. So some of the spots and uh, adjustments that we're making when we give up a little bit of map control, we're moving into new spots like we are here. These are the spots that I'm wondering, are they going to become standard or are there, are there going to be better ways? And there probably will be better and better uh, ways to make these slight adjustments in the mid round when you don't have the early nades out and there's no pressure and the T's let really, you know, uh, let things chill for a second and let the CTs fall back into the favorite positions. That's where sometimes you see TTs making a lot of mistakes. That's where you see CTs becoming a little bit uncomfortable. Can we still hold this? Can we still uh, play this angle? Do we need to have control of this? So that's something we can ask uh, maybe in this next round. But FPX pull off the retake. And of course, some really strong lineups here. Uh, a lot of a lot of strong lineups are going to win the... You know, win a lot of rounds, which will win maps on Ancient, where everything's so new. If anybody finds one OP grenade, it can win the entire map. Uh, he's really trying to time this cross and, and challenge it, but he's waiting. He uses Molly almost always after the smoke is coming down, so he'll be able to have vision as the Molly's still there. And uh, this is a spot where I think e Emmy could flash for him if he wanted to, but I don't know if they're going to coordinate in that way. Hunter comes out for the peak, and then Madden dies, holding on to it. One of the few times he probably gets destroyed in this whole map. So, G2 back in the game. Three rifles towards B this time. Let's see how the setup changes, actually. God, isn't it fucking refreshing to watch a new map and analyze it? I find myself talking about some stuff I never even bother thinking about on other maps because I've already watched them for so long. But, uh... Oh, my God. Oh, my, um... Oh, God, I had that in the wrong spot. Okay, I've got to change this. My mistake. I had the minimap not visible. Sorry about that. Holy smokes. Damn, seven rounds in. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too bad. Of, hopefully that didn't ruin the whole video. Okay. I'm super sorry. Okay. Um, My fault. My mistake. Oh, my gosh. And I honestly, I'm like staring at the minimap for most of this. So... My bad. All right, this angle is really strong for watching the side cross. They're almost never looking directly at you inside of inside of Donut. I think that's going to change soon. That little dragon peak, whatever the fuck you can call it. Um, Aztec god peak or something. That's the, the serpent peak, maybe. That angle watching the cross on B is very strong. And again, G2, keep connecting the smoke. And I think where G2 are having a little bit more success is waiting this situation out longer than Madden. Funny that they molly it, actually. 
So they, they can kind of contain here, yeah. So if you... This is something too. If you know there's some kind of stack inside of the cave and uh, you, you you come out through... You keep putting pressure on long B because you're willing to roll the dice on those entries, but eventually they don't, they don't fight you there. You can so easily contain people inside of cave and smoke them out from the site. So easy to throw that smoke from the B ramp as well. So there's a lot of options for the T's if they find out that no one's actually actively holding uh, onto long B or watching down. And it's, I don't really know exactly where we stand on how strong cave is and like where, you know, how much we need it late round and stuff like that. There's a lot of answers, a lot of questions I, I have about this right now. But so far, the early round routine has just been pretty fantastic for for FPX. It clearly got them a uh, got them to this lead in the game, and now G two started to adapt a bit. They're focusing more on other parts of the map instead of coming back. They're waiting out a lot of these grenades, just I think, out of pure respect for the fact that FPX did their due diligence in coming up with some good initial setups. And I think, uh, oh MSL, thank you for the raid. I, I hope you had a great stream. And uh, I think. Obviously, now they're slowing it down a lot more. They were rushing really, really early into long B and seeing if they could get the entries off, but this one slightly delayed flash kept killing them. There has to be at least six kills in three different rounds that uh, FPX got. And honestly, you wonder what kind of state they'd be in if even one of those rushes came through. They, uh, G2 would probably be uh, up in rounds in this game already. All right. Maybe a safe situation. I don't know. Okay, Nico takes out Mad. I skip past another Mad and Death, just like me. So this is the same flash we keep throwing. Oh, a continuation flash. Okay. So Emmy can turn. Uh oh. Emmy can turn the corner. And let's see if there's anybody here. This is actually so good. Bro, this Disco MP9. Chill the fuck out, man. What the hell? Um, That is so unbelievably distracting. I want this round to be over with so badly. Dude, what is happening? Okay, thank God. Thank you, Madden. I actually love that adjustment, though. They were going to come through the lobster pincer. All right, the lobster pincer. Over with the cave and long B push with a late flash as a development to the way they've been conditioning everybody outside B. And, oh, Jax doesn't hear that fast step outside donut and they're trying to hold this and and take over the site but now taking over the site is much harder without donut control and jack's getting killed but that's why you've got almanac my god what a shot for madden 1v2 it's it's doable it might not be easy and this is one of my favorite parts about this map right now is watching how the clutches uh develop i found myself complimenting oh did they forget he was here I find myself complimenting players, oh, NT, NT, for playing 1v1s in unique ways on other maps. I say one of my biggest compliments to a player like Flusha or to Swag from back in the day, part of the reason they were one of some of my favorite players, they'd take a 1v1 that you played 1 million times and they'd find the 1 million and 1th play, way to play it. You know what I'm saying? And that was what made them so exciting to me as players. But that's because everyone knew every way to play every clutch. But we've got a new map, and honestly, I think the clutch, the co the creativity level level limit in the clutch on this map is the highest of any map right now, just because it's so much is unknown. Again, the way people are going to play one v one standard and new ways to play them, especially around the A site with the ruins behind them. So as the boost to try to get some vision over top of. Long, and we've seen in the past when Almond, uh, when G2 have come late to awards long, they've committed fully. So I think this is why FPX maybe want to stack the site just in case. It's just pistols, so no harm, no foul, or if they're incorrect. But G2 actually pause, and FPX stay fluid. That's pretty cool. I wouldn't mind if they go and get back this information. They take a risk here. If they see so, oh, they see it. G2 are actually trying to wait out maybe this gamble yeah they're actually fully outside the doors so you you can see they're kind of I d i'm not going to say this wasn't game plan i'm not going to say this wasn't preparation but you can see they're playing it by ear a little bit you know does it feel like the stack is coming is there any anything we can do and of course there's the water bug as well which makes the rotations out a lot harder but still g2 they risk it steve has an opportunity to try to deny the plant you see he takes he, tr he tries to basically 
put himself in a position to get enough speed just to like jump that plant as soon as possible. But really great coverage from the other from Nexa or whoever it was. What a teammate that guy is. And now this half is almost over. That it's been pretty interesting so far. Let's see what happens now. Not even focusing in on just, you know, Madden's kills all the time, which is really cool. This is supposed to be just kind of a frag movie, but wow, there's so much to uh to watch and think about. Now I want to just do we should do Ancient Week. We did Brokey Week. That failed. We did Brokey Week. That didn't last more than four days. But Ancient Week, I think, could go all the way. Maybe we could do Ancient Week, actually. Because there's, I think, three demos so far that I want to watch for sure. Why don't we just do them all in a row? Why don't we only watch Ancient Demos for the next week? That's actually a good idea. Thank you. Okay, now we're in a post-plant situation already. Right? Bomb's going to go down, surely. Mad, his, he can't actually... There's no way he can... <gasps> will he find the... Will he find the the appropriate spam he does Omanek goes down that's actually a little scary so situations like this is why i think actually the smokes maybe the smokes in the future will be a bit deeper and then they'll clear out this position because if you don't remove enough points of reference with the smoke then those spams can be a little bit too easy and these sites are so um they're so uh they're so vulnerable the the the, the bomb plant zones are they're they're so susceptible to so many different angles i feel like you see madden there he's playing off sound and he has it, it feels like almost a 50-50 chance of getting the, enough damage in there. So that's why so, I think what will happen is something like what happens on cash, where you don't go into a post-plan situation until you get a certain amount of control. Like you you know flash towards truck or you take over mid first and connect it with highway. Some Something extra because sitting on the site isn't quite that good. And um, yeah, you're at risk of situations like that. Maybe if they... I've been calling that V1 and V2, but I'm thinking maybe if they if the smoke comes in a little bit deeper, they clear out V1, then you at least you at least remove some of the points of reference with the smoke down the way it was. I think you could see the pillar. You could see exactly where the site like the whole what the whole site looked like behind the smoke, and you have that perfect audio cue to get that um, to get that shot off. And I think they could have planted on the opposite side to Madden on the pillar, uh, but. They, I, I think the map's a little bit broken where you can't spam through the wood right now from cave. So I don't know if it makes sense to plant there right now. I'm not sure. It's like Groundhog Day with these smokes. Wait, is there a slit here? I didn't even know that. Oh, can you see like a pixel? That uh, Well, of course, that's why he was looking there. I thought he was... Every time I thought he was like lining something up and then canceled, but I guess he's... You can see through there. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Oh, the late retail. Oh man, I'm liking. I'm liking. Uh, I like the way G2 are thinking about their adjustments. They've done such pragmatic adjustments to exactly what FPX had brought in the early round. And I think uh, there aren't, you know, a, layers of ideas from the CD side for the early round, the mid round, the late round in the adjustments so far uh, on the map. At least talking about it now, watching this match, which was. The second or third, this is like the first tier one match. Maybe it was FPX versus Astralis. I can't remember. It's one of the first three matches on the map. So even since this demo, there's been, uh, you know, a lot of stuff that's changed. But I think at this point, that's what I think is very interesting is that I think what is really OP actually is, is slowing things down sometimes because the CTs start to get a little bit uncomfortable. There's not a lot of pressure. There's not a lot of sound pressure. And then you kind of feel like you're standing there, you know, with your pants around your ankles sometimes late in the mid, late or mid round if you use too much utility. But earlier in the game, Madden was doing a good job of not using too, too much utility. I think the smoke blocks off what he's trying to look at. Through that slit. And he's always timing his, his nade usage with the end of the smoke with a few seconds left over was the Molotov or his own smoke. I don't know if they have anybody trapped, but we just had somebody come through mid and look. We're basically ending, ending this half on just a full-on force up. I say that. Farley has an op. Wow, what a shot from Madden. That was lightning fast. 
more players here. And Hunter, he's probably been the only guy to stop Madden from having 50 kills in this game with a couple of pretty insane shots. That one's just regular, of course. Okay, let's move into the second half and talk about uh, T-Side. That was really cool to watch uh, watch CT. So let's see what the game plan is here. And I, I didn't watch this game uh, in totality. I watched a few, like a little bit at the end, but I wasn't paying attention to uh, the rotations or anything. I was just like, saw on Twitter, Madden was going crazy. So I was like, oh, I, I was in chat and I was spamming. I was here, you know. But I wasn't really paying attention to the strategy and the rotations and stuff that much. I was just in chat. I was spamming. I was here. Oh my god, they let him live. They let him live so long. Pros don't fake, as they say. Free smoke on monster. There is so much counterplay for the CTs. Uh, to to the T's coming out of these doors on different timings, everything. The open skybox. It is. You can really torment the the T's that are out here with late time grenades with some flashes. And G two are using a significant amount of utility really early on. So I think this will be. This is a pretty big win for um, FPX that they slowed it down. Didn't eat either of the HEs, dodged a molly, baited out like three flashes. And I think on this half of the map, there's a bit of a drain. So now if you uh, you know this, of course, you can use it to your advantage either by... If you go A, the retake nades are worse. If you go B, the defense grenades are worse or whatever. But uh, a lot of the time, certain maps like Inferno, for example... Removing people's retake utility is so big. Now, there's certain sites like, let's say Mirage. You draw out the B smoke on the B guy smoke on Mirage. They can't defuse without a smoke on A. That retake is damn near unwinnable. All right, so the late pressurized execute into B is successful. They drew out a good amount of utility. They got up the ramp, and there's really not a lot for G2 to stop them. Unless they want to take that late peak or actually push and reclaim it. But I think that was a very, very good game plan here from FBX to kick things off in the second half. I'd be very scared if I was G2 at the amount of patience we just saw. Of course, the, one of the... Um... Well, I'm just mirroring this patience right now, okay, from FPX. One of the things for G2 that can always keep them in the game is Hunter and Nico. They can actually just hard carry by themselves. Of course, it's Madden this time is the one they have to be worried about. People were saying, who Megalol for Madden, you know, a few weeks ago. Now, that's all It's all they can talk about is Madden. So, look at Entry Fragger Madden. Wow, just farming. Cleaning out all the angles. So the, the way they entry, of course, quite similar to how you would do most maps. If you can, if possible, you molly out the kind of cubbies that uh, that create crossfires. And then you put your back against the wall and ride the wall to clear out angles. So your aim is within, you know, within 40 degrees or so is where all the fights will come through. So kind of like on Mirage, if you come up connector. Oh, we're not picking this at all. Okay, okay. They have two players and not picking this at all. There's no way it's a 10 second stick. He just, he just walked off, didn't he? Wow. Big balls, big brain. Okay. If, uh, what was I saying? I don't remember. Oh, oh, let's like, you're coming up. Let's say you're coming up connector on Mirage on the A site. You're running a long bench. You clear out under Balk. You take, you, you look at sandwich. You look over triple, you look on default. And the entire time your back is against the bench. You don't have to look at anything behind you. So that's kind of. Like fundamentally, what makes an entry path really nice. And then once you get to the corner, they flash so your teammates flash CT spawn. You turn the corner on CT spawn. You clear that stuff out. So same thing here with Ancient, and you're seeing how Madden comes across the B site. He's not running through the middle of the site. He's not running towards V. He's running uh, alongside the wall with his back against the wall towards Cubby. And you can molly Cubby out before you get there. But in this contact, explode they didn't do that. Instead, he ran up, cleared it, and then you have. You have all this vision on the on the back lanes 
And holy shit, he really just walked on the side. They just... It's such a weird situation. You've got an MP9, a CT gun, used like a Mac-10 as a, a scout to try to sniff out a stack. And... Yeah, this is of course the man you want sniffing out a stack. He can just basically kill everybody at the moment. <laughs> okay. They can they can try. He's just made so much money this round for the for the team. Let's see if they keep on to the MP9. And watching this default has been very interesting. There's a there's a lot of reverence for the grenades coming in from the CT side. There's not so much you can do about it. When the CTs have an open skybox, a very low ceiling, very low wall in front of them. They plus they've got the height advantage, plus they've got the ability to to crush from both uh short B and long. And I think G2 are learning from uh FPX that actually this uh, kind of late round uh, B ramp control is super strong, especially after CTs are dumping nades really early. And it's always so risky to come in for that late peak. You gotta find that timing. I feel like they're really trying to use this as much as possible. Still a chance back into this round for FPX. Kind of uncomfortable with the fact that they slow it down so much in this spot. Because they have to be able to call for rotations, hope no one pushed the other site, and then also go to B again. Which, after shooting multiple guns off at once, that's going to be tough. But we've got a pretty detailed execute coming out to try to cover all positions. And holy shit, it's working well. That is awesome from G2. Sorry. FPX sucks for G2, but okay. There, okay. Maybe there's a little bit of counterplay. The fact that because it's so open, it's like throwing nades into B side overpass or something where you can, uh, the, it's like, uh, you know, the, the site is your etch a sketch. If you will, you can, you can use it however you want. Just like the CTs can throw nades at you, you can throw nades back. So if you've got a nice execute to work with, you've got enough, sp enough space for everyone to stand. No one's throwing HEs at 48 seconds into the round to stop you. That would be hard to... That would be hard to see coming, you know, in, in a game like this. So it's cool. We're getting a, taste, a tactful amount of executes. Not too many. Not being overindulgent here. But... That would be hard to read, you know. Very uh, hard to hard to see coming, especially on a new map. No one knows your style. Okay, some of these rounds, Madden's getting some uh, eco frags, right? But some of the wow, some of these rounds, G two would be winning if Madden wasn't getting these eco frags. So that's a five v three, saved. We go. We put another eight. Oh, he does get this. I remember that. Wow. Just the pure patience. Nexa was scared. He felt the aura. It's one of those moments where you're not playing to win the round. You're playing to deny the ace. That's the wrong mindset. But Madden's got that. He's got that deity aura right now. They feel him coming. Some of the prenates here. And the smoke so that if they push down or do something tricky, you don't have to even worry about it. You're wondering why would you smoke yourself out of long B, and it's just because you're not planning to peek up the ramp, but they can push down, and they have some really nice angles to fight you there. So, if you do that, you can at least get some information. Make sure they don't push short, uh, short or long. And if you do that, some rounds, whether or not you're using B, you can have a situation like this. You know they didn't push short B, and then you transition right into some kind of A exec, and then you're off into the site, and you know there's no fast flanks. That's always nice. But then your team teammates don't get the entries, and then everyone starts yelling at each other, and then your team disbands, and then you end up casting, you know? But ideally, in this situation... Oh, nice shot. Ideally, in this situation, that works because the CTs have to do the standard rotations, and they're not sure if it's a fake or whatever. Oh, so finally, something quick out, to uh, out towards mid. And uh, instantly, it's it's denied. I said, no, that won't work. Oh, man. It's going to be... Man, this map seemed like it was going to move very, very, very fast with the B hits and the mid, the mid takes and stuff and the way they pulled back the spawns. But it seems unclear whether or not that's going to be the, the way forward, especially with the amount of, um, you know, CT options that he's, you know, respecting that.
you can see how the game plan evolved a bit for G2 in that first half where they started off going quick. Like, we can beat some grenades. We trust our entries into, okay, let's just slow it down because they're doing a really good job of holding us back for the time being. And keeping your opponents at arm reach. There's the big question. We're seeing over top of the smoke. I mean... These kinds of boosts can actually work really well in spots like this where you're just not anticipating this specific angle to be open. And you know someone's reloading this side. Does Is he in cave? Is he in cubby? Oh, he was on the pillar. And are they going to camp this out? It looks like they might. Oops. Someone, surely someone that, oh, it's not, it's not Emmy. Emmy's not going to die. Okay. Smoking out the back lanes. And Jax comes in the corner of the smoke. And that, of, of course, went a little bit too deep. You know, the smoke's too shallow when you can't see the whole thing from, you know, multiple angles. And it's too deep when, uh, yeah. It basically, you want to be able to throw smokes. So they don't. Not too poofy. Sometimes. It's, it's situational. But rule of thumb. You want to be able to watch. You don't have to go around a, a, a smoke to make to see every place that someone can exit from. Because that's going to look like a lurk smoke from their perspective. And uh, you don't want to smoke that's too deep so that people can get in front of it out of your vision as well. Ideally, something where you can watch it. The entire thing. So a little bit of the game plan going towards A, but largely FPX are also looking at these late B hits. That is a solo B defender on these pushes. Uh, there it is. Finally, the late push. I, I was really wondering when G2 would try to do this just because you uh, it's such a thorn in your side to know that the T's are just camping out on your ramp. Like they, they put up a tent in your front yard and they've just been chilling there. It's like legally you can't ask them to leave, but you just want them to get off. Like, like yo, this is private property. They're like, yo, this is government owned. You can't make me move. Did they boost? It might have boosted for mid over the box. I'm not sure if you can see over the smoke from there. Maybe not. If they just boosted over the smoke from... Oh, I see. They're standing on the wood here. Okay. Not a lot you can do. There's a lot of kills that are going to come this way. That's where G2, I think, went a couple of rounds in a row. It's like Monka W for FPX. But... All right. Let's see how he deals with some of these fights. Make sure there's no trigger discipline plays going on. Checking that late. Skipping out on some angles. Clears out this V1. I'm calling this V1 and V2. I don't, I don't know. I feel like it's easy. It's intuitive. I might call it that when I'm casting unless people are really upset about it. I can call it something else, but I've been calling it V1 and V2. And now I'm going to come a No, No chance for him. Solid and post plan. Who peeks first? Well, they know Stiko's here. He peeked, of course, because he got those two kills. And Nico instant dinks Stiko, but same goes for Stiko. That's that's insane because now it's uh you know 14 to 12. Would have been 13 to 13 off that. And again, these nades come down. This time a smoke. A smoke to push him back. This is curious because this could be kind of a stalemate. They don't know if the T's have pushed through. They, you know, because Madden smoked them out, that actually counters their smoke that comes down the ramp. Uh, a similar round to before where we just go into a full A exec after denying any A push. And it'll, let's see if we can get the entries this time. Last time they couldn't get the entries. This time it looks like the entries are successful. Okay, so we don't have donut control here. This is really interesting for me. So I want to know, uh, how do we deal with this? They're, they've got their eyes on it. They still have their bomb down. They're all worried about it. Oh, this is clearly... Clearly a bit of a problem, but no one peeks him from Donut. And once the bomb is planted, it doesn't matter. I mean, Donut is still a great retake position, but it's not nearly as powerful as stopping the plant before it goes down. And there's no one to come out here off the corner. The plants are just, plants just often... I've seen this plant a number of times, so I guess this is where people are going to be planning for most of the time. If they come out A and don't go through... Oof. Whoa, that was a, a wide flick and a great second headshot after getting just enough info. 
Well done for Madden. I guess people are putting that plant down in the corner. Timeout to get called last round of the game, I think. If I'm not mistaken. And HE this time to deny the push. It's important to always mix up your grenades on the in these defaults, so it's just very unclear what you want to do. Even if you get your nades down in the same spots to do them in different orders. Let's see if this boosts if he just gets his noggin popped or if it works. Oh, assisted with a flash. That's nice. We know someone's been in the left corner of the site in the past. I'm not trying to figure out if someone will eventually peek it. 42 kills on this map for Madden. Might be with this round. 25 health, maybe not. And again, camping out on this B... Up on the on the B ramp, just putting on so much pressure here. Well, I know what position I'm going to be trying to play. My pugs in the future. Well, I'm probably going to be a little bit more reckless, but... I've got to kind of watch all positions. And Almaden has a super powerful line here because it cuts off the rotation out of B from both short and, um, uh, and from both cave and long B. It's a perfect use of his uh, position with this much HP. And now he's playing closer to the post plant and also has the option to cover this A rotation through, or sorry, any kind of rotation through mid, but I don't, it's not likely because no one's they seem paranoid that someone might have pushed through A, but not sure. So, looks like Madden. Surely someone's coming towards him. Unless they make the big long flank. But this game is over and done with. See if he has 42 or if he's getting 42 right now. There it is. The 42nd kill. The final kill of the game. A number of clutches. A number of great rounds from Madden. Some pretty sick stuff. And... Um, yeah, that's Madden, the B, B defaulter on T side, the uh, the B defender as well on uh, on CT side, and uh, the top fragger, the hard carry for the roster that's trying to break out into uh, the top 10. We should have Stiko, fingers crossed, watching a game with us, okay? Uh, watching a Watching one of these... Uh, ancient maps with us. It's the uh, one where I think they where they beat Astralis here. We're gonna watch this game back with Stiko. He has some stuff to say about say about it. And uh, uh, let's see. I had a tweet where I said I think like what well, two hundred retweets or something. And we'll watch. I don't know how I'm gonna find this, bro. Tweet too much. Um, we've done a video with him, of course. Here it is. Okay. 200 retweets to watch the ancient demo with me. So we'll watch it with Stiko. We'll get the setup. And then we watch, we'll watch that game. And he said for 2000 retweets, he'll teach us some nades. Right when, before I'm about to do it, I'm going to try to rejuice this. Maybe we can get the extra 500. Maybe. Maybe there's a chance, and then we can watch this with him and get all the extra, all the extra great nades. Okay, all the great nades. All right, cheers. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you out here for another um, demo review. Welcome to Ancient Week.